Almost 30 years after the Viking mission, a new space probe, the Mars Express, follows the path of many other probes sent to Mars. This time, the project is sponsored by the European Space Agency, and it's a satellite that will place itself in the planet's orbit, from where a landing module will be released. Thus, Mars will be photographed both from its sky and from its surface, and its physics and chemistry will be analyzed inch by inch over a broad expanse. The vehicle that will land on the planet will even be able to take samples of its subsoil to a depth of one and a half meters. One of the factors that has most stimulated the search for life on Mars once again is the study of meteorites found on Earth which came from the Red Planet. In particular, the ALH 84001, found in Antarctica in 1984. It's still being studied today, along with others like it, because scientists cannot agree on what it represents. Its defenders, however, are certain that it is a meteorite from Mars with fossil traces of certain living beings. This exploration of the solar system offers us the opportunity to investigate cosmic archaeology. We find fossils or cosmic remains that come from remote times in which the comets and asteroids were formed five billion years ago. The comets are more interesting. They are accumulations of ice and dust condemned to wandering through the solar system eternally, tracing very eccentric orbits. In the mid-1980s, the European Space Agency launched a probe to meet Halley's Comet, which appears in our sky every 76 years. The probe's name, Giotto, refers to the Italian master in whose painting the Annunciation the comet appears. The space probe provided very valuable information. Amino acids were found in the tail of Halley's Comet. These chemical elements are the base of proteins. Therefore, part of the raw material from which life is generated exists outside the Earth. Since the Giotto, the European Space Agency has concentrated on the Rosetta probe. It will be directed to the Wirtanen comet, which it will meet in the year 2011. And for the first time, it will install itself in the nucleus and not in the tail. There it will remain for some time to accompany it in its trajectory, traveling at 135,000 kilometers per hour and experiencing with the comet all the changes in its temperature as it gets closer to the sun. Like the stone from which it got its name, the Rosetta Stone that helped Champollion decipher the Egyptian hieroglyphics, this probe will reveal the interior of a comet. It will draw maps, take photographs, and will analyze the particles of dust and gas in its tail, a trace that is formed when its ices evaporate because of its proximity to the sun. We have to accept that the Earth is the only point in the solar system that at present accommodates intelligent life. But the universe is so large that simply according to statistical probability, it's safe to say that there are hundreds of similar planets. In just the Milky Way, our galaxy, it is calculated that there are some 100 billion stars, of which many could resemble the Sun. Are these stars, like our own, the core of a planetary system that may be fertile? Since 1995, we have discovered the existence of planetary systems in which there are planets that revolve around other stars that are not the solar system. This increases extraordinarily the possibilities that life may exist in other places in the universe. And furthermore, it reaffirms something very basic, and that is that the very emergence of the solar system is also a consequence of the universe's evolution.
If, in the emergence of the solar system, life appeared on the planet Earth, and if other planetary systems exist in other places in the universe, and if conditions arise similar to those that appeared in the solar system some four billion years ago, then life could also appear in those places in the universe. The search for planets outside the solar system is one of the areas of greatest development in astrophysics. This research comes up against a major obstacle, since the planets, as they do not emit light, are not directly detectable. Only stars can be seen from the Earth with the telescopes currently available. Cosmologists observe the movement of a star to figure out whether planets exist circling in orbit around it. If a star is the center of a planetary system, it also moves, tracing a small orbit around its central position. This movement would not occur if it did not have planets around it. With a technique called the Doppler technique, which analyzes the infrared spectrum of the light the star emits, it's possible to verify whether the star moves or not. When the star moves toward the point from which it is being observed, the spectrum acquires a blue tone. If it moves away, it changes to red. Thus, if the spectral lines of a star show this movement of coming and going, it surely has a planet revolving around it. More than a hundred stars have been detected with planets of many different kinds. There are those that are more or less similar to Jupiter, and others as small as Earth. In some cases, they have even been shown to have an atmosphere, which augurs well, since atmospheres tend to regulate the usually extreme temperatures of many planets. Discovering planets similar to the Earth and finding life in them would achieve full meaning if the beings found there had an intelligence that allowed for communication. But scientists have been very cautious in public and speak above all of the possibility of life in its simplest forms. For them, it would be almost a miracle if any trace of life could follow an evolution as difficult or unpredictable as that which, through its torturous path, has permitted man's appearance on Earth. But it is human nature to create other more visionary scenes of the future. From communicating with highly advanced beings with extraordinary skills, to deciding to take on the real conquest of space. Perhaps for that moment to arrive, man himself must make an evolutionary leap that would allow him to travel at the speed of light. Science fiction, always ahead of its time, has already dreamed of such things, although scientific theory has also formulated it when describing a motor that feeds on antimatter. Thus, in accord with Einstein's equation, antimatter could be created, making it collide with matter and obtaining pure energy. With that, those distant planets could be reached in a few years. The Big Bang Theory explains the origin of the universe. It's also known that the 14 billion years that have already passed are no more than the beginning of its history, since, given the force of the energies that govern it, it is impossible to put a date on its final destiny. It's not even known with any certainty how it will end. If existing matter were not enough to overcome by gravity the force of its expansion, the universe would become an almost infinite space, practically empty and completely frozen. But if, on the contrary, gravity is capable of stopping the expansion and initiating a contraction of everything the universe contains, then a Big Bang in reverse would be produced, which scientists call the Big Crunch. 
All the stars would approach one another at increasing speeds until they collided, and then they'd start condensing. In the end, the entire universe would once again be contained in a single point of density and with a nearly infinite temperature. From this perspective, the history of mankind is no more than an insignificant anecdote in the immensity of the universe. It may be, however, that there are very few beings like ourselves that have such a great tendency to ask why the cosmos exists and for what purpose. Thank you.